Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today I'm doing something uh, that's by popular request. A lot of people ask me uh, to do design tutorials. So today we're going to make a moon clock start to finish. No editing. You're going to see the entire process. Um, it took me about, I'd say about two hours to do this from start to finish. I can condense a lot of the video down to maybe an hour or so, um, but not shorter than that. So if you're here looking for entertainment, this is not it. If you're here looking to see how I design things, uh, including the mistakes <laughs> and including the, you know, the revisions and everything else, this is the video for you. If you want to learn how to design this, this is going to be a two or three layer, a three layer design. Uh, it's going to be a finished clock. You'll see the product at the end. You know, if you're here looking for design, this is the video for you. And there's going to be a hidden message somewhere in the video for my regular viewers that watch the whole video. There'll be a little bonus item in there for you, too. So uh, stick around if you want to learn how I design things and watch the entire process. Here we go. All right, so let's get started in Lightburn, and all I've done here is uh, I've just grabbed a picture off of Google of the moon, and what we're going to do is right-click on it. First, we're going to select it, then we're going to right-click on it, then we're going to click over here on Trace Image. Now, when we trace this image, we want to be able to get all of the features of the moon, and as you can see, we don't have any. <laughs> so... We're going to take this slider right here and we're going to start dragging it along until we get what we think are the features of the moon. And that is pretty close. That's looking pretty good to me right there. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to leave on delete image after trace. I'm going to have checked on, ticked on green. I'm going to say, okay. And there is our moon. So uh, the reason why it looks this way is because I have my window set to filled up here. If you had it set to wireframe you would just see the lines. I generally keep it in filled because I like to be able to switch back and forth over here like that. So now we have to get rid of all of the anomalies so I'll come up here to the top and I will ungroup the entire sketch. Now I can just grab this outer part and delete it. And you'll see we have a bunch of anomalies left over here. We can just drag over those and delete those as well. And then one thing you always want to do when you do something like this, press the control key in the letter A and make sure that only this part is highlighted with the rotation handles. If you see the handles way out here, you know you have another piece out there that you missed. Now with that highlighted, I think we can get rid of a lot of these little anomalies as well, because we don't really want these. And if I click and drag from the left, it will only select everything that's inside this rectangle. If I click and drag from the right, it'll select everything it touches, as you can see. So we're going to drag from the left just to get those out. And uh, I think we can get rid of these two and some of these over here. And maybe these two. Definitely that one and this one because we're making a layered graphic. So we don't want to have uh, everything should be attached on one layer. And let's see what else we've got. Um, we can get rid of these two right here. We can get rid of this one and this one and this one and this one and up top mm, this one too. And we're getting pretty close. Just to get a couple more of these out of the way because we don't want them. And we're going to be going uh, two layers on this. Actually, I'm going to go three layers. Now, my clock mechanism is only 
uh, well, it states that it's 15 millimeters, but it's really only 7 millimeters to the end of the little brass collar that you screw the nut on to keep it tight. So uh, I think I'm going to use three pieces of um, one and a half millimeter wood. And then we've just got these two here in the middle, which uh, I think I'm going to leave there because they are part of the moon. And the rest of these will be just simple cutouts. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a primitive, this the circle tool or the oval tool, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to pass my my mouse over the left side till it turns into a bullseye. See that? Hold down shift and drag to the right side until it turns to a bullseye. Now I've got, if I go to the selector tool, I've got a perfect circle that is the exact size of this particular moon that we're creating. So let's put that off to the side for a moment and let's take a look at what we've got here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab all of these. I'm going to duplicate it by pressing control and the letter D. So now we have two copies of the same thing. And then I'm going to hold control again and shrink this down a little bit and while it's still selected I'm gonna bring it in here and do some more shrinking because I want these to be uh, inside what we already have and there you can see that's inside but at the same time we have to move it off and skew it just a little bit and then bring it down this way and then like that and the skewing didn't help so we'll have to do this by hand and uh, I think probably the easiest thing to do would be to do them one at a time so if I do this one right here and I bring this into place we want this to be smaller so that we can paint the back side okay and that's just going to give us a, a, a drawing of where it should be painted and then we've got this one over here and I'll bring this one in here and hold control and shrink it down and that phone never gives me a break it always makes some kind of noise while I'm working <laughs> but what can you do we'll put that one in there like that what we want to do is make sure that they're distinct from the others so let's grab this one, bring it in here, let's hold control, shrink it down to size, and now manipulate it inside here so that it fits inside. And it might still be too big, so we'll bring it down a little more, like that, and bring it up. If you hold control, everything will work easily. So now what we have to do is skew it in this direction. And we're going to go into node edit in a minute. And really what I'm trying to do here is just line up these two. And right about there looks good. So let's go to node edit on the left. And what we want to do here is bring this whole group down over here. So I'm going to drag over this whole group and select them all and drag the whole group down over here and I think what I'm going to do is drag over these two and bring them in like that and then I'm going to drag over these and move these in like that so that looks pretty good there now this part over here needs some adjustment so I'll drag over these and I'll bring these up like so. Now we're looking pretty good. I might want to drag these over just a bit like that. And what we're looking to do is get an inside outline. And this handle needs to come up. And these are off over here. So we'll drag these out like that. This is too wide of a gap. So I'm going to type the letter I 
And to insert one, you could also type the letter M and that would put it in the middle. And you'll see now we're getting our shape on the inside. And we've just got a couple more we need to move over here like that. And uh, maybe bring this down a little bit. Grab these two, bring them up. And if we go to the selector tool now, you can see that shape looks good inside of that shape. We're going to take these shapes back out again when we're done. But for right now, we're just going to uh, work on putting them inside the other shapes that we have. So we want this shape now. Oh, it looks like they're joined together. So the first thing that we're going to do is come into Node Edit. We're going to zoom way in. And right over here, we're going to press the I key and the B key to break it. And now we have a broken shape there, as you can see. And we can now make two pieces. So over here, I'm just going to press the B key to break this shape. And I'm going to attach this one to there. And then I'm going to click on this one attach this one to here so that I now have two separate pieces. And now I can come to the selector key up here, grab our piece, bring it into place, hold the control key, shrink it down, and shrink it down some more like that. Hold the control key to get it perfectly positioned. And that looks pretty good, although I'm going to go into node edit and I'm just going to move a couple of these nodes in just a bit like that. And there we go. So that piece is now done. We'll grab this one, bring it into here. If I hold the control key and shrink it down, this one should shrink almost perfectly with the exception of a couple little pieces here. So we'll go to the node edit. We'll drag over those pieces and we'll bring them into line with the rest of the shape. And now we've got our inner shapes and our outer shapes. Now all of the inner shapes are going to go, and actually what I should be doing, I should be putting the inner shapes on another layer. We'll put that on the blue layer. So let me uh, move some of the inner shapes onto the blue layer. And I'll show you why later, because it'll make it easier to handle um, when it comes time to take them all off at one time. So uh, there we have all of our shapes, our inner shapes are now on the blue label, the blue layer, excuse me. <laughs> all right, the next shape that we're going to go after is going to be this big shape over here. And we're going to select it. And you can see it's all the same shape. Well, we only want this part right here. We don't want the whole shape. So let's go ahead and go back into Node Edit. You'll see there are a lot of nodes in this one. We're going to find the node that we can break right about here. I'm going to click on it, press the B key to break it. See it turn green. And now I can uh, move that off like so. So now I'm going to follow this up and around to the other side. And I think we're going to come all the way down to about here. I'm going to click on it, press the B key. It's now broken, as you can see. And now when I select it, let me get the selector tool. I can now move off just that one piece. And now this one piece, we can start to work on the nodes and get them all inside of what we've got here. So we'll come to node edit. Uh, we can actually select all of those nodes and hit the D key to delete them because I don't really like those. We can select, use the D key to delete those. We can use the D key to delete these and move this inside like that we can use the D key to delete those. Now I'll put use the M key to put one right in the middle and bring it out like that. Do you see what I'm doing here? So I'm trying to um, get this shape inside of this shape. So let's go ahead and delete those and delete some of these and I'll press the M key to get one in the middle here. 
and we'll bring this one out like that. And this is really all I'm going to be doing going through here is deleting, moving things around. These I don't want. No, yeah, these I don't want any of, so we'll get rid of those. We want to move all of these in to the middle. So let's go ahead and move these first. Move these into the middle. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of those. Bring this in. Bring this in. Let's get rid of some of these. Get rid of some of these. Get rid of some of these. And we can get rid of some of these and move this one over just a bit like that. And we'll also get rid of some of those. A lot of the, the problem ones there. Move this out a little bit. Let's delete those. Let's delete those. And let's get this out to about here. Now this shape is going to continue all the way around here. So we're going to need to add a couple more. So let's put one in the middle right here. And let's drag this out like that because we're going to be on a different layer now. And let's bring this guy over like that. And let's put one in the middle here. And we'll drag this one down. Now let's take a look, see what we got over here. We don't have, we've got one with a weird handle on it. So let's take and put the handle back the other way. Join those two together. And uh, I'm just going to delete that one because it's a pain in the butt right there. And this looks about what I'm looking to get. So what I want to do now is bring the circle in to see how close we're coming. And we're coming pretty close right there. So that looks pretty good. And I also want to um, take a look at my picture again. I guess I shouldn't have deleted it and see what we got. Yeah, we've got like a lot of brown space in there. So that would be our bottom layer. So the top layer, the right side, is where we're not going to want to take uh, wood away from. Only on the left side, following this sort of pattern over here. So yeah, we're, we're good there. All right, uh, the only things we've got left are a couple little anomalies. And what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to move these anomalies over to that side. And actually, you know what? We don't even need to. Uh, we know we need to paint the the back of these so um, Yeah, we're gonna leave those out the rest of this is okay now All we need to do at this point is delete this circle so we can add ours So let's come over here and select this guy and come into node edit again And what we're gonna want to do is break this away from the edge of the, the circle So I'm gonna put my mouse right there Right, right in that spot, it's a bullseye. I'm going to hit the letter B to break it. And you'll see that all of the uh, little Vegas lights went away. I'm going to come back on this side. I'm going to select over here. And I'm going to break it right there. So now you'll see that that's broken. And now I can come to my selector tool. Select just this outside one. And where is it attached? It's attached somewhere else. Oh, you know what? Where I broke it over here, I didn't move it out of the way, so it still thinks that it's attached. Mm, the question is, where did I break it? <laughs> Let's break it again. I'm going to hit the B key, select it, move it off. Now we should be able to just select that outer one. Yep. And hit the delete key. And it's gone. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to um, group these for a moment. And I want to, I want this one, I'm going to select the circle, to move on top of this one. And I'll hit bullseye. And now you can see we've got the moon. We just have a little more trimming to do here. And maybe it wasn't in the right spot. So I'll hold control. 
and I'll move this to where I think it was. And there is about where I think it was. So now we have our two layers, but it doesn't look like two layers. <laughs> the only thing I've got left to do is to ungroup this and put this one on the blue layer because that is goes below. We also have to duplicate it and make it a little bit larger because that one goes on top. The one on top is on the black layer like that. And this will all make sense to you after a while. And I think what we've got here, yeah, I think we're pretty close to being finished here. The only thing left to do now is to close these shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to node edit. I'm going to find the end over here of this. And I think it's this one it sure is. And I'm just going to delete everything here because I need the end facing. Oops. <laughs> I hit the delete key instead of the D key. You don't want to do that. So I'm just going to uh, delete a bunch of these right here so that I have this one that I can work with. I'm going to just bring this one down here. I'm going to hit the S key to smooth it out. See it just smoothed out for me. Got my handle. And I'm going to bring it all the way over here. Press M to put one in the middle. Bring the middle one all the way down like that. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to attach this one to that one. So I'm going to take this handle and move it out. Slide that all the way up there. I'm going to press another M for the middle so that we can make this easy to do. Fix that handle there. I think we can probably get rid of a whole bunch of these. Press the D key, not the delete key. And let's see what we've got left. Let's put this one here, grab the handle, bring it out, bring it down here and attach it right there. Let's hit the uh, M key again to put one in the middle, bring that out. And now we've got our shape that's now closed, or at least I think it's closed. <laughs> The way to know for sure is now I've got just the shape selected. If I hit the offset and set the offset to zero, say OK, then I know I'll be safe that I won't get the message that some shapes were set to uh, fill that weren't, you know, you know what that is anyway. So I'll get rid of the original one and put the offset back in its place. And there, I think we're pretty good. Let me make sure that nothing is going to overlap, which it does look like we have a little overlap over here. So I will just bring this out just a tiny little bit. Let me see. Where is that overlap? That must have been something that we missed. So we'll come in here and just drag these out of the way that come back to the selector tool and I think we'll come in here and drag these out of the way just a little bit like that we can probably even delete a whole bunch of these over here by hitting the D key to keep it smooth all right and I think we've got our final product here the only thing left to do is to put this center part right here on the blue layer so let me show you why I'm using two layers here. Now, we're going to have two pieces, so we need to have two layers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Shift this time, Shift, and I'm going to click on the blue layer. Shift, click. Now I've got the entire blue layer selected. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to click the outer circle. So now I have the blue layer and the outer circle selected. Now I'm going to press control and the letter D to duplicate those. And we now have our two layers. 
and let's get rid of this junk over here. There we go. So now we've got our base layer. This is going to be the base layer over here. This is going to be the top layer. So what's going to happen here is we're going to set the blue one to line. We're going to set the outer one to cut, obviously, to cut our material. So we'll put those both on the cut path. We're also going to set the inner black layer to cut. So everything that's on the inner black layer is going to be cut as well. So what we can do, again, shift, click on the layer, the black layer, assign it to the cut path. All of the blacks are now assigned to red. All of the blues are engraved. This blue inside ones now can all be deleted because we've got them there. So we're going to delete. Uh, <laughs> oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> okay, delete. Come on now. Delete, delete, delete. We, are, we don't need the blue inside here anymore. So we're going to delete all of the blue from inside there. So now what we've got is the cut and we've got the second cut and the engrave. And this is just to show us where we're going to paint. That's all it's for. And this is not going to cut out. It's just going to engrave those lines. So now if we take and group this and we group this, we can now put this one hold shift on top of this one bullseye and now we have our two layers our two grouped layers the only thing that we have left to do now is to put the circle in the middle and it's okay that, that they're on top of each other like that so we're going to take our circle and we're going to measure the size oh the first thing we need to do is size this and I didn't mean to do that so let's come to the selector tool. Let's grab all, both of these together, come into inches, and I want this to be um, 10.5 inches. Now we have a 10.5 inch. Actually, let's make it 11.5 because I have 12 inch wood. So now that's 11.5 inches and we're good. Now the only thing left to do is to put in the hole, which is eight millimeters. So I'm gonna hold shift drag come into millimeters gonna make it eight that is our hole so we will take this hole select it select the outside of this over here bullseye it and we now have our hole in the middle and all we have to do now is duplicate it control on the letter D now with that duplicate selected we're going to select the blue and we're going to drag it off and we have two perfect moon scenes <laughs> layers of a moon scene and look you guys are going to get the picture when we when we put this all together because uh, and actually it should it's going to be three layers all together so the only thing we have left to do now is to create one more of these circles. And if we ungroup this for a moment and just press control on the letter D, we now have our base and now we can regroup all of these. So that was the only thing I forgot was the base layer right here. And of course, we do need to put that hole in the middle. So let's go ahead and ungroup this again. Let's take this one. Put it on top of that one like so let's take that center cut out control on the letter d once i've done that it's now selected i can now press shift and the outside button uh, line <laughs> and i've got that perfect cutout in my hole right there my hole in the center right there i don't know what's wrong with my voice today with my mind it's going in other places <laughs> So we've now got the base here, and then we've got layer one and layer two that goes on top. And like I said, all of this blue in here is just to show you where you're going to be painting. And you're going to be painting this 
a different shade than this also achieving the 3d and then down here is your base so now that we've got our three layers all done we're ready now to put the final touches on the top layer which are the clock numbers so let's go ahead and do that let's take this guy over here let's press control and the letter d to duplicate it so that we have a template to work with and now we have just the template and what we're going to do is we're going to create a circular array around this so that we know where what numbers we can put where we're not gonna be able to put all the numbers on here so let's give that a shot now let's take and put a number up at the top we'll put a number one we'll go ahead and select it let's zoom in a little bit make it a little bit bigger like that and now what we'll do is drag across both of these and let's get this perfectly centered like that and let's select our number and then select our circle and come down here to the circular array tool on the bottom left side and now we have numbers so what we want uh, we want it to start at 00, zero end at 360 the steps we want to be um, we'll leave that alone the copies we want at 12 like that I don't know why I mentioned the steps and now we have our 12 numbers so we'll say okay to that and let's see now with all of this selected let's select all of it let's see how many numbers that we can get on here and it looks like we may only be able to get um, two three four ten and eleven so two three four ten and eleven are the numbers we're going to be able to get on there so let's go ahead and do that now let's go to the text tool let's come over here we're going to put number two going to click in over here number three uh no actually <laughs> that's number two number two number three number four and what else did i say 11 and i think that was it so the rest of these we can't use we'll, we're just going to come up in here and backspace them out uh, two three four backspace backspace just get rid of the rest of these two three four and eleven I think are the only ones that we're going to be able to use so now that two three four and eleven have to be on the engraved layer so we'll put that on the blue we, we're not going to use this circle that was just our template so with the the 11 2 3 and 4 selected I'm going to hold shift I'm going to click on this one over here and I'm going to hit the bullseye oh you know what I forgot to do <laughs> I forgot to group them first so and I did that wrong as well so we're going to <laughs> ungroup ungroup so now with just these selected we're going to move them off onto our graphic over here. So now we have our 2, 3, 4, and 11 selected. And if you want to make sure that it's perfect, there's another way that you can do this. We can undo that. We can um, go ahead and select both of these. Bring this over like so where it's right on top of it like that and then we can just grab that top layer and delete it and now it's perfectly aligned on there so now we have 11 and I think maybe 10 we could have done 10 as well so let's back up let's go ahead and back up get to the point where we were uh, deleting numbers <laughs> and we will put the 10 in here so there we go now we have the 10 
my mistake. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, when you do these things live, it's not quite <laughs> as easy as you might think. So this is all like one take video. So now I can align this over the top here, get it to snap in place. Click just that outer circle and delete it. And now it's perfectly aligned. And yes, this one little part of the 11 will be cut off, but that's okay. So we'll still know the hours on the clock here. So we'll have 2, 3, 4, 10, and 11. And maybe we could have even gotten one in there too. But we're going to leave it the way it is. Because I think it's going to look cool just the way it is. So we have 2, 3, 4, 10, and 11. And now we're ready to engrave. These, I will probably go ahead and put these on a... A different layer and the reason for that I'll put these on the green layer because I'm gonna do these in fill like that and we want to get this guy didn't mean to select that one so we'll put him back on the red so now we'll have that engraving on the very top le uh, layer 10 11 2 3 and 4 that's it I think we're ready we have our three layers um, probably the safe thing to do at this point uh, and it's always a safe bet to do this is to drag over everything and group them. Drag it off to make sure we got the group right. Let's go ahead and group these. And finally, we will come over here and group these. And now we have our three different layers and we can make our art library. Uh, and let's go ahead and do that. So let's go new. Uh, Lightburn, Lightburn Library. So no, we want Lightburn, Lightburn Art. We're going to call this Moon Clock and say Save. Now we have Moon Clock in our Art Library down here. And we will do grab this one, Import. We'll call this one Base. We'll grab this one, Import. We'll call this one uh, Layer 2. And we'll grab this one, import, and we'll call this one top. So now, not only do we have our graphic for our clock, which is ready to go, but we also have our art library that'll be there forever if we ever want to repeat it again. And we can even import the original photograph. So we'll just call this photo. And that way we have the original photograph that we used to design with. And now we can delete it. Now the only thing left to do is to separate these out and get them off the work area so that we can now run the job on the laser. So we'll get those off the work area. We'll put this one in the middle or you can put it in the top corner wherever it is that you're going to run your job and start running these off and we'll run off all three of these layers. Let's head over into the shop, throw this on a laser, and get it done. All right, a couple of quick changes before we uh, actually burn this is I've put everything on the red layer, and sometimes I think way ahead of myself and, and don't realize what I'm doing. Now, I wanted to use a thicker material. I wanted to use uh, three millimeter wood. So, which is actually like uh, 2.95 nominal, something like that. So, what I decided to do was I measured the size of the mechanism. And I'm using a clock mechanism that takes into account daylight savings time. So, it automatically adjusts the clock at daylight savings time twice a year. And so, I measured that and it turned out to be 55 millimeters in both directions, square. So what I did was I created a 56 millimeter square and then I put a four millimeter um, round over on the corners down here in the bottom, the radius. I clicked on radius and I clicked on all four corners to put a round over. And now that clock mechanism will fit through this first layer. And hopefully everything is going to work out fine for the other two layers. Another change or another two changes that I made was uh, I didn't think this part through. These are going to be cut through. So rather than paint them, we'll paint each layer. 
So this is the top layer and I decided that on the top layer, rather than engrave the numbers, I think they should be cut out. The second layer is going to be painted, so the painting will show through those cutouts. I hope. I hope this will all work out perfectly. But like I said, um, you know, I'm doing this um, pretty much live. Almost everything except for a couple little edits here and there is live. So I've changed some of these. I've taken out some of these graphics that were in the middle here because now this graphic, when we put this one on top of here, will be below it. And that will all be painted a different color. So you're going to be able to see these. Uh, this cutout now will reveal the bottom layer over here. So three layers, three colors. We don't need any of the little items that were in the middle. So after a little rethinking, uh, I think this is going to be a much better design. And now I think we can <laughs> go over to the shop and cut this out. So again, this part right here is the mechanism for the clock. And by cutting the entire square out, we'll be able to shave off three millimeters of the uh, thickness of the project. So it'll only be the thickness of these two, which is going to be close to about five and a half millimeters or so, somewhere, somewhere in that range. And finally, <laughs> the final, I actually went and cut this out and it didn't work. So uh, let me explain to you what happened the clock mechanism didn't reach all the way through the front. So what I wound up having to do was just do a slight little redesign. All I did was copy this square here in the middle and put it on to layer number two. And then I had to move some of these graphics out of the way, not on layer number two, but on layer number three. So I just selected all these nodes and scooted them over. So now we've got one, two, three, and now we can cut this one <laughs> out of the wood in the shop and get this done. And you can see the final project. Oh, and one other thing I forgot too was the 4 and the 10 cut completely out. So what I had to do was just break these apart. I broke apart the number 4 and I broke apart the number 10. So that, uh, you know, you'd, you'd, the whole number would still be there. Because what happened was the whole inside of the 4 and the whole inside of the 10 dropped out. And we don't want to have that. So now it's actually finished. Uh, I've got it cut out. I'm going to put up the video now uh, of the file being cut. Uh, well, the first file being cut, not the final one. But I'll show you the pictures of this final cutout and assembly and painting. And you're just going to love the way this comes out. You're going to want to do your own. Wow, that was a long video today. But um, I do have the final product, and you can see it's late at night. It's after 10 o'clock at night, <laughs> and I've got it right here. This is the final product. It's three layers. I still have to finish the outside edge right here. I'm just going to paint that white, and I have to put my brand on the back. So, um, But that's it. 
10 10 at night i'm still here doing this video for you for you guys there is the final product uh, i think it came out great except for the fact that i probably should have just made this second layer gray and uh, i might even go back and and repaint this second layer to make it a little darker i'm not good at painting that's for sure but uh, yeah i do still have to do the edge so i might i might change the second la layer to gray have the white on top, the gray, and then the black in the background, and then put my brand on the back, and uh, maybe I'll put you know a light finish on the back of this. I might take the clock back out. I might just paint it on. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but um, that is the final product. I want to thank you all <laughs> for sticking around, um, and it's actually pretty pretty beefy. It's pretty heavy, even though it's only nine millimeter stick, but. Um, the thing that I wanted to cover here is the clock mechanism. So you have to make sure that you that you have a long enough uh, clock mechanism, which I didn't. So I wound up having to cut the back layers out of two of them, two out of the three. I wish I would have gotten something that maybe was the mechanism was maybe twice as long. This way I didn't have to actually cut out the back. But it turned out okay because it's not going to sit too far off the wall. So... That turned out okay, cutting out the two layers. But, um, you know, I think it would have been better if I didn't have to make any cutouts at all, except for the hands. I don't know. What do you guys think? But um, I still, I think the project itself came out great. I know there was a lot of revisions in it, but this is uh, how it works. This is how I design so uh, I design things and usually what I'll do is I'll cut them out of really thin, uh, you know, one and a half millimeter wood just to see how they come out and layer them together because it's cheap enough to to do that. And um, this one here, I only um, used three extra pieces of wood. So um, it wasn't a, a big expense. I guess altogether I used six pieces of the 12 by 12 uh, wood the three millimeter wood or the three millimeter nominal wood and um, I think it was 2.9 or 2.85 to 2.9 something like that but I only used six pieces all together so it cost me about um, with the clock mechanism I got those on sale it's a clock that automatically changes for uh, daylight savings time twice a year it, it uh, slows down and speeds up at three o'clock in the morning to change the time and I think I got those on sale for five dollars a piece I bought like five of them uh, I'll put a link down below in the description if you want to take a look at it but that's the final product right there um, I'm happy with it except maybe that layer with the blue I should have probably put more gray in there uh, like I said go from uh, light light almost white gray to uh, darker gray to a black and I still might do that so I haven't decided yet uh, what I'm going to do there. But anyway, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you saw the little uh, bonus thing that I put in there where you can download this for free. So I know that some of my regular viewers that watch the entire video deserve to get something. So there's that coupon code over in my store to get this file for free so that you can do this yourself if you want to use my design. Or you can redesign it you start off with my art gallery, uh, my art library, excuse me, and bring them out and redesign it to however you want. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And it, believe me, it took some time to make it. The, the biggest time that I put into this is the post-production. It took about two hours to make the clock and probably about five hours to compile all the video. So here I am. It's a uh, 10 10 at night i'm getting this video finished hopefully i'll be finished by midnight and uh, i want to thank you all for watching and you know it's it's just been a fun project so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one